Hello and welcome back to Char Reads. My name is Charlotte and today we will be talking about the song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This came out in 2011 um, and it is the retelling of the story of Achilles from the perspective of his close companion and in this book lover, Patroclus. <laughs> I friggin loved it. I loved it. I loved it so much. I don't know why I haven't read it until now. I loved it. I knew before I read it I would love it, but I didn't realise a lot of elements of it and I loved it so much. It is the perfect tragedy, I love a Greek tragedy, where it just, it builds you up, it takes you to a really wonderful place and then it just like absolutely tears you down in the cruelest way ever and it is brilliant. Okay, let's get into it. Um, this is like very much gay erotica and I actually didn't know that going in. I read this in my book club and my friends also did not realise that it was very much erotica. When we had been recommended it by someone's mum and someone's grandma, like my friend's granny did this for her book club and loved it, didn't mention the fact that it was erotica. In the same way that everyone got into Fifty Shades of Grey, I love that we've sort of given up on the fact that um, something being really sexy is like doesn't mean that you don't want to really read it. <laughs> I personally have been very drawn to male and male erotica since I was a teenager. Is this something I should be admitting? <laughs> I was really into fan fiction of a certain couple. Um, guesses down in the comments. Uh, and <laughs> I don't know why. I think maybe it's something to do with the like the fact that I can never be part of a male-male relationship and that it's like taboo, taboo and dealing with that like power struggle between two men. Um, I've just always found it really fucking sexy and I got so much of that in this and I loved it. But besides from my personal love of homoerotica, um, I think the reason that this can appeal to so many people that wouldn't usually pick up a book that is like in a large part erotica is that the emotional side of their relationship is in many ways more powerful than the sexual physical side of their relationship which means that you um you kind of can't help but really really like their love for each other and i think to be honest you could be a bit of a homophobe and still fall for a relationship portrayed in the way this is portrayed the thing that pulled me back from it is that i think it was too perfect a relationship. It's the kind of relationship that you find so intoxicating as a reader because it is at the intensity that I'm not sure is possible in reality um, and even if it is possible not advisable I guess. It's kind of like the same way that Edward and Bella from Twilight have this like unbreakable I'll do anything for you you don't have any flaws kind of connection where when you read that back now, it seems so childish and silly. Um, but like you're rooting for these so much that it doesn't seem childish and silly, even though it is like incredibly intense. I think we're drawn to these kind of relationships um, because we'd all love to find that one person that is just like so completes you without any of the like squabbles of who's doing the dishes um, when it's really is like that deep, powerful, I'll move mountains for you love, um, that I don't think is, I don't think is possible. I don't think that's me being like unromantic. Um, I think to have a healthy relationship, you need to like argue and know how to argue and deal with life. I don't know, is that me being unromantic or is it reasonable to say that the reason that we're drawn so much to these relationships is because they're like a thing that we all wish for that we can't really have? Does that make sense? Another aspect that I obviously loved was the whole Greek myth thing. Um, unfortunately, I knew what the ending was. Um, no, I don't like remember most of the Iliad, um, but uh, I know like the vague plot points, so I did know how it ended. Um, but the thing about it being Greek myth is that it can be super weird and fantastical and you can't question it. There being gods and like them you know, rowing to different islands after each other and centaurs and like gender bending and um, and like war that is somehow for only focused on a handful of characters um, is obviously not very literal, but it really works in the context of like whimsical Greek myth. 
And it's also fun it being quite familiar. Um, like even if you don't know the story very well, I'm sure everyone has at least heard of Odysseus, for example. Like the, there are names that jump out at you and you're like, oh yes, they're part of this grander Greek myth narrative, which I think as humans, we love those kind of things when there's like a collection of information that you know you can dive into and it's kind of like isolated um but so intricate i don't know where i'm going with that so i'm gonna stop i have madeline miller's second book circe but i mean if it doesn't involve much gay sex what's the point <laughs> i'm just so in the mood for smut after having read this um Sorry, it's not all smutty. It's just an element of it that I personally enjoy immensely. <laughs> this has been a very giggly short review of The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Also blurred by my favourite author, Donna Tartt, so that's fun. If you haven't read it yet, oh my god, do. You're gonna love it. It's so good. <laughs> um, and I will see you in another video soon. I hope you enjoyed this one. <laughs> Bye.